the upcoming MMA Fight Pit show. Uh, now, I know you fought at 135 before in the WEC. Uh, does putting on the few extra pounds going to be a uh, problem for you? Like, do you think there's going to be a size concern, or do you feel pretty confident in that weight class, too? Yes, I feel, feel pretty confident Like uh, about me fighting at 135, and this is a 135-pound bout, and I've fought majority of my career at 135, and there's been a couple times that I've went up in weight and fought at five guys at 145 and 155, but other than that, it's like amateur and pro career, so, you know, I just enjoy fighting. Right. Now, uh, I know uh, he's, you know, some people say he's near the end of his career, but Jens Pulver, obviously, he's still a legend of the sport. Uh, I'm sure you're not taking him lightly at all, but, uh, you know, for you, what would it mean to you to get a win over a name as big as him? You know, to get a win over Jens is huge, and like I said before, I guarantee you the last 10 guys, just to show you how much this guy has came and became a legend, I guarantee you the last 10 guys, win or loss, that he's fought, they've considered him the fight of their life, and that's the way I consider him. And, you know, he might be going through a bad spell right now, but you never look past Jens Pulver. He's just as dangerous whenever he's hungry, and the thing is, you know, you... You uh, back someone up into the corner, they're going to come out swinging. So, you know, I'm not looking past Jens, and a win over Jens is huge for me. Right. Now, I, I know just from watching you in the WEC that you have a, a, a really good grappling game. Uh, are, are you automatically planning on taking it to the ground, or, or are you willing to stand and trade with them and see what happens there? Yeah, but it's kind of like one of those things, you know, like go out there and throw it out, you know, and then we go down and, I mean, you know, I know he goes to a lot, resorts a lot to his wrestling, but, you know, we'll, we'll see where it plays out because there's, there's no game plan in a fight game. You can get ready, you know, you can put together combinations, but once you go in there and get slugged in the face, pretty much 90% of the game plans fly out the window and it's pretty much for survival then. Right, and I mentioned the WEC. Uh, you had a few fights there on uh, national television, so you got some exposure there. But you know, it, it's been a little while, so I'm sure you've made some improvements to your game. So for the people who haven't seen you fight since then, you know, what can they expect from you now versus the way you used to fight back then? You know, I worked a little bit, you know, on uh, my stand up, and you know, a lot on you know, defending takedowns, and you know, a little more of my grappling. But you know. It's just, I enjoy fighting, I enjoy entertaining, and, you know, I, I do entrances before my fight, so, you know, I consider myself, you know, an entertaining fighter, and I, you know, I'm not going to badmouth Jen, he's a great fighter, and he opened up the door for the light of weights for us, and, you know, I just, you know, expect a good, good night, you know, that Saturday night for both of us getting there in exchange. Right, right, now, uh, you know, uh, you still training at uh, Craig Jackson's camp, right? Yes, uh, Greg Jackson's a mean one MMA. Sure. So what kind of, what kind of dog, dog you got there? Yeah, let me put them outside. Hold on real quick. Sorry about that, John. No problem, no problem. Oh, I got to hit them on the internet, Dad. What's that? I'm sorry about that, John. That's all right. What kind of dog um, you got? I got a German Shepherd, and my wife got a mutt that she saved. She was on death row, and she, she thinks she's whipping, or I don't know what she is, but I have two dogs and a cat, and, you know, I enjoy hanging out with them because they don't know no beans whenever I, their dad's in a high-pressure situation. I love to hang out with them, and, you know, whenever you hang out with fans, you hear those dumb questions. Are you scared? You nervous? You're fighting a legend? And, you know, my cats and dogs don't ask me nothing to do. Right. Give me unconditional love. Right, right. No, and don't you don't have to apologize. I got a border collie mix that barks half the time I do interviews anyway, so it's not a big deal. But um, I uh, forget what was I going to ask. Oh yeah, so training at Greg Jackson's camp. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of great fighters down there. Um, you know, but uh, I, I think you know most of the names that people know are in the higher weight classes, except for maybe Demacio Page. But uh, you know, who who are you training with specifically to get ready for this fight? What's that pretty story you going out right there? No, sorry, right, uh, so, towards the last. Yeah, so, uh, so, you know, which guys are you training specifically to, uh, get ready for this fight? You know, I trained with a lot of wrestlers, a lot of guys like Nick Urso, Travis Marks, and, you know, Demacio Page, John Dodson. You know, there's a handful of guys, and, you know, there's a lot of guys that hit Mitch. You know, I got my first beginning of my camp with Melvin Gillard, Diego Sanchez, and a lot of those guys. But, you know, it's just, uh, who's who, who's gonna be in there, because it's so 
revolving door and everyone fights, goes under, goes under, uh, you know, under brakes and everything. So it's like a hit and miss. So, you know, it's kind of like one of those things, you know, whoever's in there in the gym, I mean, that's who we train with, make the best of what's there. Right. Now, now Jackson, obviously, he's known as a really great game planner. Uh, so, you know, when you have a guy like that in your corner, do you even really need to watch tape on guys and study them yourselves, or do you kind of leave that to him and his staff? You know, he, he uh, you know, since I've been under Greg Jackson, you know, and Chris Patrol and them, they, they see what I don't see. So, if you can go out there and go fight 100 miles an hour, and then whenever they slow it down and say, hey, this is what you're doing wrong in between rounds, or they'll yell at you during the fight, and, you know, and then it kind of just puts stuff in perspective, kind of slows it down, especially, you know, Greg Jackson, and Jackson having the calm boys, kind of relaxes you while you're in there, you know, in the heat of the moment. Right. And, uh, you know, obviously, you know, you mentioned fighting at 100 miles an hour. You know, you, you're never a guy to take a break. And, you know, I know there's a lot of other guys in your gym like that, like Demacio, uh, Diego Sanchez, and a bunch of other guys. So, you know, how funny for you was it when uh, people were kind of in that stretch of where they were making fun of Jackson fighters for being boring? Because I, I always kind of got a kick out of that. Oh, well, you know, I actually heard one Jackson fighter being called boring. But other than that, you know, there's a mixture of fighters that came from numerous camps. So... It's not always one bad apple that'll ruin the bunch, you know, that'll be kind of, you know, and, you know, kind of bad for people to look at it that way because pretty much all of us are different. That's like me saying, you know, all the heavyweight division and boxing is boring to watch and they're slow and this and that whenever Mike Tyson was very entertaining other than watching, you know, the later James Tony. So every fight is different, you know, and... You just gotta, you know, take the lashes and keep on marching. You can't really read into stuff like that. And I just kind of, you know, I heard it once, and you know, it was kind of like one of those things. It was kind of a joke around the gym. You know, you can't be boring and this and that. You gotta keep moving, be entertaining, whatever. And you know, I actually heard it in the gym, but whenever I googled it, and they were saying it about, you know, a certain fighter, and you know, it's it comes with the territory. You know, there's. He can go out and try to save all the sick children in the world, and I guarantee you half the world will be just questioning why are you doing it whenever you're really doing it for a good cause. Right, that's true. Um, so, uh, you know, talking about, you know, MMA in general, uh, you know, this is a pretty good car coming up. Uh, you know, you're fighting Jens, and, of course, there's the Houston alexander razak Hassan fight, so it's going to be a pay-per-view event people can watch. So, But I was curious, you know, the UFC is really starting to take a lot of control over things, and, you know, that can mean good and bad things. But from your perspective and where you are in your career, you know, do you feel like there's a, enough opportunities out there for everyone, or do you feel like you're starting to run out of options and that you need to really, you know, Kind of Honestly, my options are great. Life is great. You know, I just got married and then I have my first daughter. You know, I have my college degree. I have my associates in liberal arts. I'm actually in school right now. They pulled me out of Barber College, you know, halfway through and out of 10 windows. So, you know, I look, you know, I have life after fighting, but, you know, I never consider myself running out of options. You know, there's always open doors. I've never ever ran into a problem where I could not find a fight. They actually came came out to, you know, came out and found me to get this fight, so I never really had to run into a problem like that, and honestly, you know, I had an option to go back to the UFC, and, you know, I kind of, you know, had to slow things down at 28 fights, I'm 24 and 4, amateur and pro, and it's like one of those things where you just like, man, I, I had my, had my time in the limelight, and, you know, these young bucks that that I'm seeing around here locally, man, they're hungry and they had that look in their eye that I had when I started out and it's all about proving yourself and those are the guys you gotta watch out for. And, you know, I'm I'm you know, I I wanna, you know, save some of my brain cells and be able to take care of my family, you know. Like I said, you know, I've been with my wife twelve years, finally got married and we're finally gonna have our first kid and I think I look, you know, Outside of MMA, I just look at MMA as a part-time job for me, and I enjoy doing it for the fans and friends and family. Okay, that's pretty cool. So, um, but you know, let's let's say you know, you, let's say if you win this fight and maybe get another win streak going, and the UFC comes calling again, uh, do you think you'd reconsider at some point, and you're just looking to get some more uh, more fights under your belt, or do you think maybe you're done at the biggest stage? Uh, you know, I'd love to go back. You know, it's at this situation, if the price is right and it pays my bills, of course. 
But, you know, for a while there in my earlier career, I was making more money cutting hair and tint windows and doing stuff like that. And I was and trying to juggle gym time. So it's like one of those give and takes. But if the money's right, of course, anybody with the right mind would do it. And, you know, the only reason I jumped all over this fight was the money was right, the timing was right, and, you know, the opponent was right. And, you know, they asked like a handful of guys. And I stepped up to the plate and said, let's go, you know, I... Enjoy Jens Pulver, and you know, I have nothing but respect for the guy. And for 15 minutes, we're going to try to demolish each other. And after the fight, man, I'd love to get a picture with the guy and put it on my Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool, Wayne. Well, I know, I know you always bring it win or lose, and uh, I'm sure people are going to be watching this fight. It's on August 13th. It's from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, appreciate you taking the time and doing the show, and uh, we'll try and get a hold of you after the fight so we can talk about your win, hopefully. All right. Thank All right. you, John. You guys have a good day. All right. All right. And also, real quick, uh, would you like to mention some sponsors or anything? Like any shout-outs you want to do? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to give a shout-out to my uh, Uncle Frank with Monarch Masonry, Jeff Snob, Spain Diagnostic, my chiropractor, Max Muscle, Rio Rancho, TD Show Club, uh, TD Gold with uh, Big Mike, Black Diamond, King Carl, G&G Advertising, Gray's Electric, David Gray, Carlos Condit, Jackson, Winkle John, Jim, Mean One MMA, Richmond Toy for Switchrail, Damage Control, Inner the Mountain Gods Resort, R&D Entertainment, Warrior Nutrition, and Las Cruces in New Mexico, OTM Albuquerque, Albuquerque Barber College, thank you to Pierre Gonzalez for letting me fight, The Barbershop, Donut, Gardunio, Shelton Jewelers, you know, I want to thank Elliot Shelton, Round One, Mike Adams, and I'd like to say, you know, rest in peace to Tina Gray, you know, uh, Hello, long-standing Bear Chief Gray, my cousin Joe and Isaac in Lapa, Idaho, George Starr, Bobby, Nanette Dolan, Kwan, and Scott and Picard. You know, rest in peace to my friends and family, and I'll be fighting for them. All right, cool, man. Well, like I said, I appreciate it, and good luck on uh, Friday. All right, thank All right, you, John. Take care. Yeah, have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye.